How about a quick and fun print in place hinge design? Here's a phone stand model that prints in just 19 minutes and will allow me to demonstrate a design technique for successful print in place hinges. Now print in place means no assembly required. The model prints in one piece and after popping it from the build plate, it will have a working hinge. These are a lot of fun to make and opens up a world of creativity. All right, let's jump right in. First of all, I want to send a shout out to all my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you all supporting my channel. It means a lot. It allows me to set the time to create these videos for you. And if you are not a supporter of this channel and you would like to be, I've got all the links and information below. So besides uh, helping me create videos like this, you also get some bonus content in the form of additional videos and all my Fusion 360 files for the models I create, including this one. Also, you'll see me using a bunch of sketch constraints in this tutorial. Mastering the sketch constraints available to you are an essential part of learning Fusion 360 and allowing you to be a more efficient designer and also being able to create designs that don't break when you come back and make changes. I've gone ahead and put together a sketch constraints cheat sheet for you. It's a free download and the link for that is below as well. We're going to begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane and I'm going to come in with a two point rectangle right under the create menu. I'm going to start at the origin and I'm going to make this 50 millimeters in height by three and a half millimeters in width. There we have it. Let me zoom in. And now we're going to add the slits that we need to be able to revolve this and make a working hinge. So the approach I'm going to take here um, is I'm going to just draw a couple lines here. I'm going to come over here just sort of in this bottom half here. I'm going to go in straight about a millimeter and then at an angle and then across. And so this is going to be the profile we're going to use. Um, just a, a shout out actually to one of my students, Ed, who came up with the uh, this uh, little part right here in my class because um, I'll show you what I was doing before. I was doing this, which worked. But the problem is I'm going to come in with an offset. So there's actually a couple problems. If I offset this, notice if I go down, this line doesn't extend to the edge here. And if I go up, it goes over. So then you have to extend it or come in and trim it, uh, which then removes constraints and it's just a little hassle. And then it presents another issue later on in the design. So what I came up with was um, adding this little slit here because now look what happens if I offset or I should say add the little a horizontal line here because now you can move this up and down and it meets on the edge here. It'll make a little more sense later why I'm doing this, but for now I'm gonna do that offset, hit enter, and let's go ahead and set this dimension here at uh, 0 0.5 millimeters. There we have it, and now we'll do a few more dimensions. I'll dimension this top line to be one millimeter, and I'll also dimension this line here at one millimeter, and then I'm gonna put an angle here of 135, and this angle here is between this horizontal line and the angled line here. All right, and then uh, doing all that, you'll see now that they're related. So if I move one, the other one will follow up and down. I'm gonna take the top line here um, and I'm gonna dimension. Let's do this line from my origin. So let me go back down, click there, and let's make that say 17 millimeters. Okay, now we'll simply mirror this to the top. So to do that, we'll create a mirror line. So let's find that center line by snapping to that uh, triangle there right in the middle, put a line across, let's make it a construction line, and then we'll come in and grab a mirror here under our create menu, double click this chain and this chain here. And then we're gonna choose our mirror line here, click on select, let me zoom out so we can see it. Click here and we see that we have it mirrored right there. All right, and now we're simply gonna select these three profiles and create a revolve. So let me finish the sketch, go to create down to uh, revolve right here, select each of these three profiles. And then my axis of rotation is going to be this left line here. And there we have it, I've got my revolve. And just to see what's going on, let's do a quick uh, section analysis here. And now section analysis right in the center, that center plane there. And you can see here that we have this gap here, um, sort of a little cone feature that will allow this to spin and give us the clearance we need. 
All right, I'll click OK there. Let's untoggle the analysis and we'll continue the design. For our next sketch, notice our, um, if I bring in our origin plane, let's go to a home view here, that it cuts the center of our cylinder there. And I want my next plane to be at the bottom here. Now I know I made this circle uh, to be uh, 3.5 millimeters in radius, which gives me a seven millimeter diameter. So what I'm gonna do is create an offset plane. So I'll go to construct offset plane, select that uh, XY plane, and I'm going to go down negative 3.5 millimeters. And that's going to put that plane uh, right down here. And uh, so with that, basically it's tangent to that bottom surface. And then I'm gonna create a sketch right on that plane I just made. Uh, let's untoggle the body's visibility here, and I don't need to see these sketches, so let me remove the sketch. And I'll create a rough outline of the shape I want to make, and then come in later and add some dimensions. So let me start. Um, let's let me start with a line down here and go up. I'm gonna go up 50 millimeters. Let's see. I can snap to these grids here because I've got uh, my grid settings here. Um, snap to grid. And you can see my grids are, I have them at five millimeters. And this is because if you click here and you go to grid settings, I've got that set to fixed and uh, major grid spacing at five. So you can change the size of those grids. All right, so let's continue. Let me untoggle that origin. Uh, I'm gonna grab another line here. I'm also gonna go over uh, another 50 millimeters here. Go up 15 and then go over about 10 down a bit, about three, maybe go in two, and then maybe down a little bit. I'm not being um, completely accurate here. I'm just gonna go uh, roughly what I need, and then I'm gonna come in and uh, add dimensions. So next I'm gonna go in at an angle, and come up right here, and then snap back to the center there. Okay, so you can see uh, Fusion put in a bunch of constraints here with these uh, perpendicular constraints. So the really important thing is some of these lines I want straight. If they're not straight, then go ahead and add the uh, constraints here, a horizontal constraint to make them straight. Okay, so next I'm going to uh, put in my dimension. So I'll start with this vertical line. I'm gonna make that 50 millimeters. You can see even though I made the line 50 millimeters by snapping to the grid, it, Fusion doesn't consider that as you know actual dimension. So it doesn't throw them in unless you come in and actually add them here. Uh, making the bottom 50, the right here, I'm going to go with 15. You can see things got thrown off a little bit, so let me just grab this and bring it back down. All right, um, 10 millimeters. You can sometimes mess up the shape of your profile when you start entering dimensions, but it's easy to fix by just moving the parts that aren't constrained yet. All right, we'll continue. I'm going to make this vertical line here three millimeters, and then let me take this down a bit. This part here, I'm going to go with two, and then I'm going to enter five for this vertical line, and then this horizontal line, we're going to go with 15. All right, now I'm going to enter the angle between these two lines, so that horizontal and the angle line. I'm going to make that 110 millimeters. This is the beauty of this. You can make it whatever angle you want, you know, depending how you want. If you're using this as a phone stand, how, you know, the angle you want it to sit. Okay, now I can see that this is fully constrained because all the lines are black now and not blue. And so before I extrude this, there's one other thing I need to do, and I'm going to bring in my bodies here, and I'm going to project this point right here. So P for project, I'm going to project that point, click OK, untoggle bodies now. And with that point, I'm going to take a line. I'm just going to draw a straight line going up and down, just making sure I get a, a constraint here telling me that it's vertical. And then I'm going to grab my coincident constraint and click on the line. And then this point, now go straight through it. Uh, you'll see me use a lot of constraints here, and this is it's really great you know, to know what these constraints do because it's really going to speed up your design uh, flow uh, when you create your own models. Um, and I do have a constraints cheat sheet. It's free. I have the link down below. Um, you can click on it, and basically it uh, it's a sheet you print out, or you can just save it to your computer, and it shows you um, exactly what each of these constraints do um, with like an image and a description. Highly recommend you check that out and get to learn these constraints because it's really going to speed up your workflow and allow you to make better designs that can later be changed without breaking. All right, so now that I have that set, I'll click on Finish Sketch 
And now we're going to take just this profile here on the right and we're going to extrude that up. But uh, let's bring in uh, our body's visibility. And basically I want this to attach to just this bottom hinge and the top and I don't need to see the middle one. So let me untoggle the visibility. Uh, if for extrude, I'm going to select just this profile without this section here on the left and I'm going to go up three millimeters and then click OK. All right, now that I have that, I want to now attach this extrusion that I just made to this cylinder. So let me untoggle sketches here. And I, you'll see me untoggle sketches sometimes when I'm doing extrusions. It just makes it easier sometimes to make the selections you need because with the sketches in view, it can be easy to select the wrong uh, profile you're looking for. And sometimes it prevents you from selecting the body surfaces that you actually want to extrude. So let me untoggle those. Uh, and then I'm going to hit E for extrude. I'm going to select this left face here and I want that to extrude to this cylinder. So what I'm going to do is change the extent type from distance to to object and I can simply select the cylinder here and notice what happened there. Let me click OK. Operation is join and now that extrusion follows this shape of that cylinder. So you can see how it curves in and I have now only two bodies and it follows that shape. Um, notice though that if I print this like this, that this uh, that surface would then weld to this middle hinge here, which I don't want. And so I need to put a little uh, clearance spacing in there. So to do that, what I'm going to do is go to modify down to press pull, select just that surface. And I'm going to do a negative 0.5 millimeters. It's going to take that surface and pull it back, leaving me with a gap in here. So now if I show the cylinder, you can see I have the little gap in there that allow it to turn. It'd be easier to see with a section analysis here. So let's turn that on and you can see that gap there. So this is really the key here to get these uh, print in place uh, prints to work. Um, okay, so now that I have that, let me close that section analysis there. Um, we're basically going to do the same thing to the opposite side. Um, instead of creating a new sketch, let's go back to the last sketch we did on the timeline and go to edit and let's untoggle our body's visibility and we'll simply create a mirror here. So create down to mirror and then we'll double click this line here to select the entire chain. Uh, hold shift and click the left edge to deselect that one because we want that to be our mirror line and then we're also going to select this uh, line here that we made. So 10 objects uh, total for selection and now we're going to click on mirror line and we'll select that center line to create the mirror, click OK, and you can see we've got the same thing mirrored there. Um, this line here is just a dimension line. You can see it's thinner than the other line, so sometimes it can be easy to confuse this with an actual line. You can always move those out the way if you find they're getting in the way. Okay, now that we have this section, we're going to just kind of rinse and repeat, finish sketch. Let's bring the sketch back into view. We'll untoggle the visibility here of our last body, leaving just that center hinge there. Uh, e for extrude, select that surface and let's go up three millimeters. Click OK. Uh, we'll untoggle sketch visibility and then E for extrude again. We're going to select this left face there and distance. We're going to change that from, uh, or extent type, we're going to change that from distance to two object. Our object is going to be the cylinder. Get that same curve there. Uh, operation is joined. Click OK. And now we'll have to again apply that offset there, that press pull, so it doesn't weld to our existing hinges. So let's go to modify, press pull, select both of these surfaces here, negative 0.5 millimeter press pull there. And there we have it. And that's basically it right there. Let me do a section analysis here, and you can see that we've got this hinge here you know, um, showing the gap right in between there on the right here and then on, on the left here. And this prints beautifully. So last thing we'll do here is I'll just add some fillets. Uh, so F for fillet and I'm going to fillet each of these edges here. And so I'll just go ahead and select them. Beautiful thing with the fillet tools, you can select right through the part. It's smart enough to know um, exactly uh, what you want to select. It knows to select the edges. So I'm just going to click on all these. Oops, if you select the wrong face, click on it again to deselect it. Um, I should have a total of 16 edges. I'm going to do a one millimeter fillet there just to round all those out. 
And there we go. There's our print and place hinge. Go ahead and try out the model and uh, give it a shot printing it and see how it works for you. And let me know in the comments below if uh, you have success with this or if you get stuck, let me know where if it's not um, printing uh, right or if it's not really folding for you. Uh, but one thing you can experiment here is with the uh, the clearance there for the hinge. So for example, you can come into this first sketch and I made this uh, 0.5 millimeter clearance as I did here, you know, on the gap between these profiles. And also it's the same clearance I applied when I did the, uh, the offset on these, uh, let me bring here, on the a press pull tool. When I pulled these in, I went with a 0.5 millimeter clearance. I did experiment with my uh, printer. I could uh, actually uh, get away with a uh, 0.2 millimeter clearance, um, but you know you may not have um, that same uh, success depending on the printer you have. Uh, 0.5 should definitely work, um, but then you can try going down like 0.4, 0.3, 0.2 because you definitely get a much tighter. Um, fit where it doesn't wobble as much and and it'll be uh, you know and it'll still work uh, some of that has to do also with the thickness of that first layer so even though the rest might be fine if your um, first layer is really squishing down on your printer and it may um, cause uh, the bottom layer to fuse um, but the rest could be fine I actually found that with one of my printers I had to kind of come in and just um, use a a box cutter here, an X-Acto knife to just cut a little slit on the bottom and then the rest of it folded fine. Um, so yeah, it all, all depend on the um, the printer, but 0.5 is a good safe bet to start with and then you can try to bring that down more and more. I also wanted to include how I took advantage of some slicer settings to get this to print with the uh, infill pattern here showing. So you can see here I've got the gyro infill. Um, and I wanted to show you exactly the settings I used in Prusa Slicer to get this done, which really can be applied to any slicer. Uh, but I think I'm going to save that for a, a separate video because this video is getting a, a bit long. So uh, stay tuned for that one. All right, if you have any questions on any of the steps I took in this tutorial, uh, leave them down below in the comments.